Hello. The world around us is beautiful, and it's made up of lines. Take this from behind me here. That line right there, that is called a horizon line, and today we'll be learning about them. Let's go inside, warm up, and draw some. When you first start drawing horizon lines, you might not draw them at all. Beginning drawers sometimes anchor their subjects to the bottom of the page and use that bottom edge of the page to represent the ground. This is a big no-no. Now, once you get a little bit better at drawing, you may draw the ground. And then put all of your subjects on that line that represents the ground. And then that line becomes like a tightrope, a line that separates earth and sky. But underneath that line, you may think of it as under the ground with roots and worms and things like this. That only allows you to have one little slice of your drawing where you can actually see the ground and everything else is dirt and sky. This is no good either. What you really want to do with the horizon line is draw all the subjects in your drawing. In this case, a nice tree and a hungry beaver. And then behind your subjects, above them and behind them, draw the horizon line in the distance. This allows you to have half of your drawing be the sky and half of your drawing be the surface of the ground. And then you can draw all kinds of things exploring this surface. This is how you want to use the horizon line. Horizon lines don't just separate grass from the sky. They can also be used to separate the floor from the wall. In this drawing, I'll draw a teacher, a math teacher. And today his students are working on a very difficult addition problem. But where is the ground? There it is, above and behind his feet. That's how you use a horizon line for an inside scene. Once you realize how to use horizon lines for the floor and the ground, you'll begin to want to apply them to other surfaces, like a table. If you don't apply them to a table, you'll end up having a line for your table and then putting all the food or whatever's on resting on top of the table stacked right on top of that line. This doesn't really give your table a very 3D look. Let's see if we can apply the horizon line rules to a surface like a table. Let's have a chicken, and then the surface that that chicken is resting on, like the plate, the horizon line of the plate goes behind the chicken. We'll have a jug of water, a souffle, then treat the back edge of the table like a horizon line. Draw it above and behind, all of the subjects on the table, bring down the sides of the table, and close it off in the front, and now you have a nice 3D looking table that uses the skill of a horizon line for its surface. Don't forget about the horizon line for the room, and why not hang up a picture of dear old granny, make it a little bit homey in here, this looks like a Thanksgiving dinner, and how about a window looking out onto the hills in the background. Some little pine trees and Rufus out in the yard. Beautiful. Now it's time for some challenge drawings. I'm going to draw a scene here and then in your sketchbook try to do your version of the same scene using the horizon line skills correctly. I'm always going to start with my subjects first before the horizon lines. For this scene my first subject is going to be a character sledding so I've got him in his winter attire, a little scarf, a little hat. And then I'll draw a sled below him. I'm going to make this one of the old-timey sleds with the metal runners. And then around him, let's draw some trees. Remember that if trees are closer to you, they'll be bigger. So closer trees will be more towards the bottom and middle of the page. And then as you go up the page, the trees will get smaller as they go away from you. Once I've drawn all my subjects, I'll begin throwing down some horizon lines, making sure the horizon lines are above and behind my subjects. And you can have multiple horizon lines in a drawing. If you have multiple hills or multiple surfaces, going back into the distance. 
I'll do some lines in the snow to, sh to show where he's been sledding. And if something is in the very back and it does sit at the top of a hill, it could be resting on that horizon line like a house in the distance. There you go. Now have your try at a snowy scene. The next challenge drawing will be an indoor scene. We'll have a mad scientist working at his table. So draw a character. Your character could be uh, turned away from you working at his desk. So you might not see the eyes, you might just see the nose and the back of the head. And then draw some items on the desk. Could be beakers, test tubes, little cups full of potions. Remember, always draw your subjects first before you worry about the table or before you worry about the horizon line. Draw everything that's going to be on those, and then you won't have to do as much erasing. Then I'm going to draw the horizon line of the table behind all those objects. Bring down the legs. That was pretty easy. To get a little bit fancier, let's see if we can draw a shelf, but apply the rules of horizon but apply the rules of a horizon line to the surfaces of the shelf. So again, I'm drawing my subjects first. A skull, a human foot. Remember, this is an evil scientist. A jar full of eyes. And some books on the bottom shelf. Once I've drawn all my subjects, I'll draw a line at the front of the shelf but that can't be the only line I draw. I need to draw the horizon line for the back edge of the shelf to make it really look like these shelves are holding the objects. Use a diagonal line on one side of the shelf to show the corner. And the diagonal line on the other side of the shelf to, sh to show the side of it. And there you have a 3D shelf with objects on it. Notice how the horizon line of each one of those shelves is behind the object that's resting on the shelf. And then behind everything, draw the horizon line that separates the floor from the wall. For our final horizon line challenge, let's draw a beach scene. Start with one of the subjects that would be in the sand, like a palm tree, uh, a pirate's treasure chest. Put some gold doubloons in there, a latch, have it kind of sunk down into the sand. And then your first horizon line will be the line that separates the sand from the water. This line could be curvy. Then whatever's going on in the water, maybe there's a pirate ship, um, maybe there are things floating on top of the water. We're talking about the top of the water here, so don't think about under the water. Now we don't want this to look like it is completely floating above the water. So I'm going to actually going to race out the bottom of that pirate ship and draw part of it sunk down into the water. Now the distant horizon line for the ocean will always be a flat straight line. This is miles and miles away. Then you could put the sun on that horizon line, have a setting sun. You could put some details and waves on the surface of the water. And there you have a nice pirate scene. Have a go at this drawing and see if you can draw an ocean scene using horizon lines to show the surface of the water and not having to draw what's underneath the water.